In this video tutorial, I will explain how to use JavaScript and CSS to enhance the look and feel of your ORM applications. This is a tutorial for advanced users and it assumes that the user is familiar with the following technologies JavaScript, jQuery and CSS. ORM allows you to create great looking applications without you having to know anything about CSS or JavaScript. But those users who are familiar with these technologies can take their applications to even higher state-of-the-art level. In this tutorial I will just show you a few examples that will hopefully give you a push in the right direction. It is beyond the scope of the tutorial to explain all possibilities and all intricacies of JavaScript, jQuery or CSS. So let's dive into an example straight away. Here we have the issue resolution sample application and we are looking at its dashboard. The dashboard has the grid of open issues and we will be doing some modifications to this grid. Where I am gives you quite a number of options to customize the look and feel of the grid. But what if we want to use the options that are not given to us out of the box? For example, the user can resize the columns of the grid. What if I want to disable this functionality? There is no way to control this from within a where I am. This is where some scripting can be useful. The grid is implemented by a Kendo UI grid widget. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is whether Kendo UI offers a configuration option to control this behavior. To do this, we need to go to the Kendo UI API reference. And here I'm looking at it. Then we need to find the grid widget. It's under, under the UI. and look at its configuration options. You can see there's quite a few, but now I can see the option I'm interested in. It's called resizable and it can be true or false. Obviously, where I am always sets it to true, but we want it to be false for our grid. So we open the query that shows the grid. And select the scripts property. There we add code for our initialization script. The initialization script is executed before the grid is shown based on the configuration object that has all the properties for the grid widget. The configuration object is called config. So our script needs to have the following code. Config resizable equals false. That's all we have to do. Now if we refresh the screen we can see that we can no longer resize the columns. Suppose now that I want to hide the header of this grid that displays the column names. Again, there is no way to do it from within a where I am. If we look at the configuration options of the Kendo UI widget, there is no option for this either. We can still do it, however. Let's have a look at the DOM structure of the grid using the browser inspector. Here I find the element representing this uh, header and I can see that it is assigned a unique class name, kgrid header. Let's see if we can turn off the display of this element directly in the inspector. If we succeed, 
then we can do it in the script. So I assign display none style to this element and bingo, the element has disappeared. How can we do it in the script? Well, we need to write a render script for the query and this script will be executed after the grid has been drawn. The script will find the appropriate element in the DOM and hide it by setting the appropriate style. How do we find the appropriate element? Note that we need to find the element not in the entire document, which may have other grids, but only within the parent element for our own grid. Let's find this element. Here I have this element selected. Note that the element is assigned a unique ID by where I am. The ID of this element can be programmatically found in the render script using the parser object available to the script. This is how we can get this ID. So we select the script's property of our query again, go to the render script and add the following code there. We find the parent element first using jQuery and its ID. Then we find the header element having a unique class kgreetHeader within the parent element. And then we set the style of this header using jQuery. Let's see what happens. Now when we refresh our screen, we can see that the header of the grid is no longer displayed. The same can be achieved not by a script, but by CSS. It is generally recommended to use CSS for your changes where possible, and only when certain things cannot be achieved by CSS, then use the script. And with the script you can do virtually anything. So how can we hide the header using CSS? First of all, let's assign a unique CSS class to our grid. We do it using the CSS class property. The name of the class can be anything as long as it's unique. Let's say it's called IR Open Issues. If we inspect the grid now, we will see that our parent grid element has been assigned a unique class marker. This makes it possible to uniquely refer to child elements within the parent element. Now we need to provide the CSS file with a definition of our class. If I put this file in a where I am Tomcat web apps a where I am custom CSS directory, then the CSS file will be available to all my applications. But if I put it in a subfolder with the name of the business space, it will only be available to this business space. And that's what we will do. So we create a directory called issue resolution. And we create our file in this directory. The name of the file doesn't really matter. Now I need to provide the styling of the kgrid header element. This element is contained inside our grid, so the CSS definition must look like this.
Now we just need to refresh the browser and see that our header is gone. You can use the described approaches with scripts in CSS not only for grids but also for calendars, custom queries, charts, visual perspectives and so on. For your scripts you need to know which Kendo UI widget is used by a where I am, if any. You can see the correspondence table in the programmer's reference guide. Now I will go through an example involving forms. Forms are slightly different from other elements in that they don't have a single Kendo UI widget that you can control. Instead, a form consists of attributes. Depending on the type of the attribute, some of them are implemented as Kendo UI widgets and some are not. Again, the correspondence table is in the programmer's reference guide. So you can control configuration options of certain attributes or you can use a script or CSS to modify the HTML markup and styling of the form. In the issue resolution application, we have a form for a new issue. One of the attributes is implemented with a Kendo UI date time picker widget. Let's look at the configuration options for this widget and see if there are any cool things that we can do that a where I am does not offer out of the box. So here is configuration options for this widget. And one of the options allows specifying years instead of months for the date control. We can see it right here. Let's incorporate this option into our attribute. To do this, we go to the corresponding form and select the cell that displays the attribute. Then we click on the script property of the cell. Only initialization script is available for cells on a form and the render script is only available for the form itself. The Kenta UI configuration properties are available in the object called config.config. So our script looks like this. config.config.start equals year. And this is the result. You can find more details about objects exposed by the script in the programmer's reference guide. Once again, this tutorial should only give you a push in the right direction. You can explore the rest on your own. If you know JavaScript and CSS, only sky is the limit for you.